What's the word, y'all? Listen, we are back. It's been a minute since we've done one of these trade videos. And when I say a minute, I think it's been like four days or so. You know what I'm saying? If you're new around here, one thing we do very often on this channel is go through articles, react to trades. And I say, hey, if I was this team, I'll accept it. But I won't accept this team. And it's usually at the expense of Bleach Report. But I have not got a call, a text, an email that said, hey, Kenny, how about you stop talking about our articles negatively? So we're going to continue to do that. I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I give constructive criticism. I said to Zach Buckley. Um, he's usually the guy that's going to be making these trade articles. And for the most part, I he does a solid job at times. And I think in this video, we have two different trade articles. And I think they're both written by Zach Buckley. So he's just out here. Boom, boom, boom. GM this, GM that. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Um, subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. Five stars. Five star NBA trades you never thought of. Five star. See, usually when we do these reaction videos to these trades, sometimes you get traces like, okay, it's a rotational player for a rotational player. At the end of the day, nobody cares. We're talking about five star trades. Star. And we got James Harden. So we're going to get to the point where James Harden's in the trade package. And I have an idea that's probably going to be dealing with Joel Embiid or Ben Simmons because that's something that has been, I wouldn't say rumored, but NBA fans have been drawing this up since, uh, H-Town got eliminated from the playoffs, and uh, since Philly got eliminated, both of them. So let's see what we got, Mr. Buckley. Trade number one, Philly finds a playmaker, Utah adds stretch four. We got Mike Conley, Georges Niang, Tobias Harris, Shake Milton, two first-round picks. Five-star NBA trades. Five-star NBA trades. Tobias Harris, Mike Conley, five-star NBA trades. Tobias... It ain't adding up. Um, okay, so here we are. Philly finds a playmaker. Utah adds a stretch four. Mike Conley is one of my favorite players in the NBA. He's one of the few players in the NBA that I have. You know, like those jersey shirts that will say, like, the team name and the number and the stuff on the back? I got a Memphis Grizzlies uh, Mike Conley one years ago. And I only have a few of them in my, my, my dresser. So Mike Conley is really a guy I like. Very disappointing season. Very, very disappointing season. I thought he was gonna potentially, you know, potentially give Utah this as that they were looking for, but he just did not do that. Especially when compared to like the year before that and the year before that. Um, so this trade on paper is just I don't enjoy it for either side, really. I mean, maybe if I'm great and then who would like it more to be Utah? And the only reason I say that is because you're getting off the Tobias Harris contract, but you're also throwing the two first round picks. So do you want to trade? I mean, sure, you want to get off this money because Mike Conley will be a free agent. You know, Mike Conley be a free agent because I think he has a player option. So, he'll be a free agent after next season. Tobias Harris is guaranteed for four more years. So, you want to get off this max money for a player that's nowhere near max uh, max caliber. Do you want to throw in one of your young promising guys in two picks to dump a contract and, and just get a guy that disappointed last season? Probably not. So, in this situation, I'm going to say no, no, no. Hard pass. Next. Wizards get defensive. Interesting. Jazz get younger and deeper. Now, second trade. Two of them, you're dealing with the Utah Jazz and not with the same trade pieces. So, hypothetically speaking, if you wanted to draw this up at 2K, you could put together both of these trades and see what happened to the Utah Jazz. Um, so, we have Rudy Gobert getting traded for Thomas Bryan, Troy Brown Jr., Is Smith, Mo Wagner, and a ninth overall pick. So, we got all of the all of the Washington Wizards players, except for Bradley Beal and John Wall in this trade for Rudy Gobert. Um, okay, it, this is an interesting trade. I mean, this is depending on if the Utah Jazz have decided that they do want to break up Donovan Mitchell and the Rudy Gobert tandem. Obviously, it works well. It's just maybe not well enough that you would want to win a championship. And Rudy Gobert is going to be up for a contract soon. And we, every time his name comes up in these trade videos, I have to mention it because it's very important. Rudy Gobert is a very good, good NBA player. He's been an all-NBA player, defensive player of the year twice, all-defensive player for the last couple of years. He is that impactful of a player. But he's going to be qualified for a Supermax contract. Personally, I would not want to be the person, the team, to give him a Supermax. And maybe that's not really his value. Maybe maybe whatever team he is on, whether it be Utah, whether they could trade him, don't even offer him a Supermax. I just don't even want it to be on the table with him on, him on my team, right? So this is if the Jazz are like, okay, we don't want to give him the max, and we want to go a different direction. Sure, this, this kind of makes sense for that way. But for the Washington Wizards, it's interesting we don't know what John Wall is going to look like. And uh, one thing we can say about John Wall, whether he looks great or not, he's going to force feed his center. You know, see, Marcin Gortat was out there just getting the ball and doing quick little flip shots like that because John Wall set him up so well. And Rudy Gobert would like that. I mean, he complained about touches. But I guess these classify as touches, but they're not like, give me the ball and let me create. It's just like, again, flip up shots. So that would be cool to see. 
But uh, think about the money that will be in Washington. You just extended Bradley Beal. John Wall was making 40 plus million. Then you could potentially have to pay Rudy Gobert a max contract, super max contract. That three is good enough to make the playoffs for sure. That's not a championship quality three. And you'll be giving up three max spots and the rest of your team is going to be bonds. You have Rui Hachimura selling his rookie deal. But you're going to be signing players for the vet minimum to come to Washington and just be good but not great. I'm, I'm passing. I'm passing. Next we have... Pacers at point guard. Okay, I like to see the point guard. He's going to be in every single trade article because he's one of the most valuable assets, depending on who you ask, on the trade market this season. Let's get the third star and the Thunder Embrace Youth. Again, making trade articles where there's two teams is hard. A three-team trade is damn near impossible to make it work. So let's see if he did. Any other Pacers get Chris Paul in the 25th overall pick from Denver. The, the Denver's pick from OKC. Brooklyn gets Victor Oladipo on Jeremy Lamb. He did say he wanted out, but then he re reacted, retracted that statement. OKC gets Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, and Torian Prince. I bet OKC fans would be happy with that because you know you're going to have to trade Chris Paul. That's a fact. You're getting Karis LeVert, who has shown glimpses that he can be very, very good in his league. Jared Allen has shown he can be very, very good in his league. And he can be the next center because you're probably going to have to deal Steven Adams or let Steven Adams do his thing because he just doesn't fit the timeline. I bet OKC fans would be happy with this. Honestly, this package for Chris Paul and a 25th overall pick, not bad. Brooklyn, you're giving up Karras, you're giving up Jared Allen, and you're getting up Torian Prince, and you're getting back a guy coming off an Achilles injury and Victor Ladipo, who has to redeem himself, let's be honest. After the injury, he doesn't look amazing. I still have hope, but he had to redeem himself. And then Andy gets a point guard. I guess Malcolm Brogdon did play a lot of back or back uh, off ball when he was in Milwaukee. And even this season, too, he played a lot of off ball. And he, he thrived in that role. Pacer fans, you'd be trading Victor Oladipo and Jeremy Lamb for Chris Paul in the 25th pick. And maybe it's something I don't know, but I don't think that's terrible, right? If Victor Oladipo is really like, I want out, then this ain't terrible. The only thing is, of course, Chris Paul's contract and his age, that's something that's going to hold you back for sure. Um, and Chris Paul with this roster doesn't make them a championship contender either. So I can see you'd be like, eh, we'd rather just keep Jeremy Lamb and Victor Oladipo and look for a different option. Uh, Brooklyn, I think Brooklyn would be okay with this. You know, one of the reasons they made the firing of their coach is because there was some animosity between Jared Allen and DeAndre Jordan as far as who gets to start and everything. So if you're getting him out of there. You already seen or you're already making the narrative that Karis LeVert won't be able to fit alongside Kyrie and KD because he is ball dominant. Victor Deep on Jeremy Lamb wouldn't be a terrible package. The only thing is both of these guys are coming off injuries. <laughs> both of these guys are coming off injuries, so maybe you don't want to, you know, take that leap. It's not a bad three-team trade, but there is, of course, pros and cons to each thing in here. Next. Suns go big. Okay. Blazers rebuild. They Now we're getting to the star caliber trades for sure. And the Warriors add a wing. Another three-team trade. This guy's just throwing out the three teams like this, like that. The Suns receive Damian Lillard. Okay. Portland Trailblazer fans. I, I don't see Damian Lillard ever getting traded. Like, honestly, he's, he looks like a for-lifer for me. Uh, but again, we're just living in this fictional world. Let's see what else, he's, what else is going on. So if you are trading Damian Lillard, Portland Trailblazer fans, you're getting back Ricky Rubio. Mikel Bridges, Smiley, Jordan Poole, the second overall pick, a 2022 first round pick, top three protected from Phoenix, and a 2024 first round pick unprotected from Phoenix. Um, The only way you trade Damian Lillard is if he walks into the office and say, okay, I'm done, right? That's the only reason you would trade him. And if you are trading him, sure, you don't get the star player in return that you would probably want, but this is a rebuild. You get Ricky Rubio, who's older, but he'll be off contract very soon. You get Mikael Bridges, who in the bubble we saw that he is a really viable 3 and D option, and I think he's only 23, 24 years old. You get Smiley, who was killing the G League. I'm just gonna, I'm just trying to talk you into everything. Smiley was killing the G League. Jordan Poole, I still don't have an opinion on just yet. You get the second overall pick. You get a pick from Phoenix, two picks from Phoenix. Um, you get two picks from Phoenix. Portland Trailblazers fans, you're the real one in this situation that you'd probably say no. The Warriors would get Kelly Oubre and drop down to the 10th pick. They get a wing that they've been wanting. Um, another wing that they've been wanting. And then they still get a top 10 pick. It's just not the number two. Um, I think the Phoenix Suns do this straight. Again, they've been wanting to make the playoffs. You saw they went 
They were 8 0. But then again, you're probably like, hey, we just went 8 0. Do you want to trade Mikael? Do you want to trade Ricky Rubio? These guys just helped us go 8 0 in the bubble. But it's Damian Lillard. Come on, bro. You, you I, Suns fans will probably do this deal, right? Portland Trailblazers fans, again, this is only if Damian Lillard walks in and say, I want out. You get the second overall pick. You get some young pieces and then more picks. And then the Warriors get another wing that they can they can add on to the rotation who can run some four, back up four, or, or four spot if you want to go small with Draymond at the five and Wiggs and Clay and Steph. And then you whoever you get that 10th overall pick. I can say so far, these three-team trades ain't terrible. I've seen some really bad three-team tra trades, especially, uh, especially on Twitter. Next, Milwaukee moves all in. Minnesota adds a star, and Houston resets. Okay, Milwaukee Bucks get James Harden. You got to show me. Well, well, okay, Houston getting Jerick over a top seven. What was he, number five pick last year in that realm? Didn't look great his rookie season, but he, he was a rookie. Dante DiVincenzo, DJ Wilson, James Johnson in the first overall pick, and the 24th overall pick. And a, another pick that's top three protected from Milwaukee that could be interesting. You know what I'm saying? That could be an interesting pick. Minnesota trades the first overall pick and gets back Chris Middleton in a second. Same thing, like I said in the other article or the other trade up here. This is if James Harden walks in. It's like, okay, let's, I don't want to be here anymore, right? That's the only way you trade James Harden, at least I think. I thought there was going to be a trade dealing with Philly. I did not see this happening. The, the Milwaukee Bucks getting James Harden would be ridiculous. But if you are trading James Harden, you get the first overall pick. And again, this is a draft class. It's not star power. There's no guaranteed Ja. There's no guaranteed Zion like last year. But the first overall pick can get you something great, of course. Um, Jericho over. Some of these guys maybe not amazing. This this is I I guess. Again, if James Harden wants out. Minnesota, I think it will be hard to convince the Minnesota fans to trade the first overall pick for Chris Middleton. Even though I don't know if there's a person in this draft class that will ever peak at the point of Chris Middleton. And Minnesota fans want to make the playoffs, right? Chris Middleton would help you make the playoffs. I'm being honest with you. D'Angelo Russell, Chris Middleton, and Cat will help you make the playoffs. But it's going to be hard to convince the fans that we're trading the first overall pick for Chris Middleton. That's it. There was another article that I had. And it's also star related. Let's go back full screen. Trades to rescue ringless star, like NBA's ringless stars. I, I don't know how many there is in this one. There's five. There's five of them. And, and we've already gone 12 minutes on the other one. This won't go 12 minutes, I don't think. But this one's from today. Here we go. Rudy Gobert to Boston. We've already talked about Rudy Gobert and why maybe you don't want to trade for him. But let's talk about why you might want to. In this trade, you got Rudy Gobert, Ed Davis, and George Niang. For Gordon Hayward, Daniel Tice. Gordon, didn't Gordon Hayward get booed after he left? Gordon Hayward, Daniel Tice, and the 14th overall pick. Boston, the reason you would potentially do this deal is, of course, as, as bad as I've mentioned, you know, you having to be the team to pay him, you'd also have to pay Jason Tatum coming up. He raises your ceiling as a championship quality team. It is a fact. And as long as you have a coach that is willing to sit him when he is not being good, then you're fine. And Brad Stevens can be that guy. Brad Stevens can be that guy. This definitely raises your ceiling. Again, yeah, the money, the money, the money. Uh, Utah Jazz fans, I don't know how you feel about bringing back Gordon Hayward, then you Tyson, the 14th overall pick for your All-NBA center. Next, Chris Paul to Milwaukee. We don't have to talk about this. This trade has popped up a thousand times. Eric Bledsoe, Ersa Ilyasova, not to even this. We, this trade's popped up a thousand times. I do this trade. Cool. Um, Giannis, Lillard get a new run. Hold on. Giannis and Lillard get new running mates? Okay, this is weird. Bradley Beal goes to Milwaukee. Chris Middleton goes to Portland, and Washington gets CJ, Anthony Simons, Nas Little, 16, 24, and another pick that's top three protected. Okay. Trailblazer fans, how do you feel about trading CJ and, and a lot of pieces, by the way? You're not just trading CJ, you're trading Anthony Simons, who I still believe that Anthony Simons is going to have a very a decent NBA career. You traded Nas Little, who I didn't see enough of to have an opinion on. You trade in your pick, and you're trading another pick to upgrade from CJ to Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton is a better player at this point on both sides of the floor. I think I can say that and not get crucified in the comment section. But is he that much of an upgrade that you're willing to throw this big package at? Probably not. Does, does he raise your ceiling more than CJ? Probably so. But does he raise your ceiling to a championship team? Probably not. 
Um, on the other hand, Bradley Beal would be exactly what a team like the Portland, I mean, uh, a team like the Milwaukee Bucks could need. Because let's let's be honest, bro, that 30 is not a fluke. You know, that 30 is not a fluke. That guy actually, he's just built like that. Uh, Paul George to Brooklyn. Okay. Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Jared Allen, 19th overall pick. I mean, if you're going to trade Paul George, this is, not a ba- this is not a bad return for Paul George. Honestly, it's not. It wouldn't be a bad return for Paul George. Uh, Karis, we already talked about, you know, how he showed signs of being very, very good, and he can play on ball. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, shout out to Spencer Dinwiddie. Very solid. Jared Allen, I mean, you probably have to let Montrez here walk, so Jared Allen coming in and playing those minutes would be cool. And then you also get a pick. I don't hate this. I wouldn't hate this trade if I'm the Clippers. If you're looking to get off Paul George at this point before he becomes a free agent next season, not a bad return. And for the Brooklyn Nets, we know Paul George is ceiling. We know his ceiling. And in this situation, you wouldn't have to rely on him to be your second best player. He'd be your third best player. Right? Yeah, we can we can say that. Yeah, yeah, he'd be your third best player. And then lastly, we have James Harden of Philly. This is the trade I thought was going to be in the first article. James Harden for Ben Simmons, Mike Scott, Zaire Smith, and a 21. I think it's an interesting little thing. I think it'd be interesting, honestly. I think it'd be very, very interesting. I, I would love to see the Houston Rockets have Ben Simmons with the shooters around him. And I would love to see Philly have a guy like Joel B. It's been a long time since we've seen James Harden in like a flowy, good offense. It's just kind of like, give me the ball, I'm going to isolate. I would love to see him in a flowy moving off the ball type offense and it's been a minute so he, he'd probably have to relearn how to run off screens but it's an interesting trade that's it if you enjoyed the video leave it a like let me know what you think about these trades i'm sure your team may have got hit so let me know what you think about the trades that are associated with your team leave a like subscribe i'm out peace